Every few years, the auto industry hits a turning point. And this week, Elon Musk did exactly that. Uh, Elon Musk is unique, totally unique in that aspect. For the first time, Tesla confirmed the deployment of a new 51,000-ton gigapress in Texas, a machine powerful enough to form the entire rear structure of the Tesla Model 2 in just five seconds. There's nobody I've been <clears throat> bumped into that has his depth of knowledge. But what does a machine this massive really change for everyday drivers? Could a 51,000-ton press finally make a sub-$25,000 Tesla not only possible, but profitable? And more importantly for you, will this level of manufacturing speed eventually slash service costs and ownership headaches for senior buyers, the fastest-growing EV demographic in the U.S.? We'll break all of that down in today's video. Before we dive in, welcome to Auto Gear Shift, the channel where we cut through the hype and bring you the most data-driven Tesla analysis on YouTube. If you're new here, hit subscribe and ring the bell. We're chasing 19,123 subscribers, and once we hit it, we'll unlock a special behind-the-scenes breakdown on how Tesla secretly tests Gigapress molds before they ever enter production. Trust me, you won't want to miss that. How can a 51,000-ton press reshape the entire Model 2 production line in just five seconds? The scale of the new 51,000-ton Gigapress becomes clear only when you compare it to today's largest die-casting machines. Until recently, the industry standard hovered around 13 million to 18 million pounds of clamping force, with only a handful of experimental systems pushing toward 25 million pounds. Even Tesla's own 9,000-ton press, used for the Model Y, was once considered a borderline engineering stunt. Now, Tesla is stepping into a completely different class of machinery, one delivering roughly 102 million pounds of clamping force, about five times stronger than anything a legacy automaker currently operates. At this size, the press is capable of injecting more than 440 pounds of molten alloy into a mold and locking it with enough force to form a single-piece rear underbody in five seconds, including fill, solidify, and eject. Speed alone isn't the story. This level of force allows Tesla to shrink a structural section that normally requires 120 to 160 welded components into one massive casting. That removes dozens of robots, hundreds of weld points, and several production stations. In an industry where every robot often costs tens of thousands of dollars per year in maintenance and calibration, eliminating entire blocks of the assembly line is what gives Tesla the economic room to target a sub-$25,000 Model 2. Analysts estimate that a single-piece casting could shave $1,000 to $1,800 off the production cost per vehicle, depending on metal yield and how many castings Tesla ultimately uses. But the real disruption is cycle time. Traditional stamping and welding lines can take 8 to 12 minutes to fabricate the same underbody structure depending on the number of welded joints and material thickness. With a five-second casting cycle, even factoring in mold cooldown, Tesla could realistically output more than 600 completed underbodies per hour from a single 51,000-ton machine. By comparison, Toyota's fastest consolidated stamping lines peak at around 45 bodies per hour, and Volkswagen's MEB line averages roughly 38 to 52 per hour at its US and European facilities. This is why Elon Musk calls the Gigapress the first machine that builds the machine. Its throughput is so high that it forces the rest of the factory to accelerate, driving redesigns in conveyors, pack installation, material flow, and even building layout. At Giga Texas, the new press is expected to anchor an optimized Model 2 line designed specifically around single-piece castings. That translates into shorter lines, fewer workers per vehicle, smoother automation and more consistent quality. Because every casting comes out either perfect or gets immediately recycled. And that's the part older drivers tend to appreciate most. Fewer welded joints mean fewer long-term failure points. When castings replace dozens of individual stamped parts, parts that typically loosen, rattle, or corrode over time, 
you end up with a stiffer, quieter structure that stays solid even after 200,000 miles of real-world American driving. Why is Tesla using a new alloy formula? And what does it mean for Model 2 durability and safety? The jump to a 51,000-ton press isn't just about force. It demands an entirely new alloy engineered to survive extreme thermal and mechanical stress. Traditional automotive aluminum alloys struggle when injected under pressures exceeding 100 million pounds of clamp force, often cracking during rapid cooling or developing internal porosity, that weakens long-term rigidity. Tesla's solution, according to engineers familiar with the Texas expansion, is a modified aluminum-magnesium blend, optimized for ultra-fast fill rates and high thermal stability, around 1,100 to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. What makes this alloy different is its ability to maintain structural integrity, even when shot into a mold in under a second. Instead of forming visible stress lines or weak spots, problems that historically forced automakers to weld multiple stamped panels, Tesla's formula creates a uniform grain structure strong enough to serve as a load-bearing single-piece frame. Early estimates suggest the new alloy can deliver 20 to 25% higher tensile strength compared to the mix used in the 9,000-ton Model Y castings, bringing it closer to the performance of certain aerospace-grade aluminum parts, but at automotive production volumes. This matters because a Model 2 body made from fewer but stronger pieces behaves very differently in real-world impacts. Instead of welds acting as failure points, the casting distributes crash forces across a continuous surface, improving energy absorption. Engineers project that even with a smaller and lighter body, the Model 2 could meet or exceed the five-star IIHS and NHTSA crash standards that heavier vehicles often rely on sheer mass to achieve. And that's critical for older drivers, especially those looking for a compact EV without compromising on safety during highway travel at 70 to 80 miles per hour. At the same time, the alloy's heat tolerance allows Tesla to integrate more thermal pathways directly into the casting. This opens the door for future battery platforms that use the underbody as part of the cooling structure, similar to the approach used in Tesla's structural battery packs today. For the Model 2, engineers expect a battery footprint around 37 to 42 kilowatt hours, with thermal loads potentially reaching 110 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit during fast charging. Integrating cooling channels into the casting could help stabilize temperatures faster, reducing long-term battery degradation and allowing more frequent high-power charging cycles for owners who rely on road trips or long daily commutes. Another advantage comes from weight savings. By eliminating dozens of steel brackets, reinforcements, and weld plates, Tesla is expected to remove 120 to 180 pounds from the rear structure alone. In a compact EV where efficiency is everything, that could translate to an additional 12 to 20 miles of range or allow Tesla to shrink the battery pack while maintaining the same 240 to 270 mile target range. Either outcome drastically reduces cost. When battery cells account for roughly 60 to $80 per kilowatt hour, a lighter pack could save Tesla several hundred dollars per vehicle before the first Model 2 even rolls off the Texas line. What does a 51,000-ton press actually mean for you as a future Model 2 owner? For most people, giant casting machines and factory layouts sound like something only engineers care about. But with the 51,000-ton Giga Press, the real impact isn't in the machinery. It's in what you get when you eventually sit behind the wheel. Because when a vehicle is built in 5 seconds instead of 10 minutes, and when 3,000 welds shrink to one solid casting, the long-term effects show up directly in your ownership experience. Fewer repairs, fewer rattles, fewer service visits, and a car that stays tight and quiet even after 100,000 to 200,000 miles. Let's start with reliability. Every welded joint is a potential future problem. Over time, welds loosen, corrode, or introduce small vibrations especially for older drivers who value a stable, quiet cabin on long highway drives. By replacing 120 to 160 welded components with a single structural casting, 
Tesla dramatically reduces those future failure points. You're not just buying a cheaper car, you're buying one with fewer parts that can ever break. Think of it as the difference between a watch with 500 little screws and a watch milled out of a single block of metal. One needs maintenance, the other simply lasts. Then there's the cost over the life of the vehicle. A traditional automaker needs hundreds of robots and thousands of welds to produce a compact car. That overhead, labor, energy, calibration, gets baked into the price you pay. It's one reason many affordable EVs still end up costing over $30,000 out the door. Tesla's five-second casting cycle replaces entire welding halls, cutting what analysts estimate could be 30 to 40 hours of production labor per vehicle. When you eliminate those hours, you eliminate a big chunk of markup. That's how Tesla plans to keep the Model 2 under $25,000 without forcing buyers to accept cheap interiors or low-range batteries. Even maintenance becomes simpler. A one-piece rear underbody means fewer bolts to tighten, fewer seams to inspect, and far fewer components that can wear unevenly. For older drivers who don't want to spend Saturday mornings at a service center, this matters. A simpler structure also means fewer alignment issues after hitting potholes, something every American driver deals with especially in northern states where winter roads destroy suspension components. And let's talk safety. A single casting distributes crash forces more evenly than dozens of smaller panels, which means the Model 2 could meet five-star standards without relying on heavy steel reinforcements. If you're someone who spends real time on highways, 70 to 80 miles per hour driving, the confidence that a compact EV can protect you as well as a larger SUV is a huge deal. So would you trust a compact EV built from a single massive casting over a traditional welded design? Share your thoughts below. Your experience and perspective genuinely shape the conversations we build on this channel. If you enjoyed this breakdown, give the video a like, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next deep dive from Autogear Shift.